everybody. Uh, today uh, we're going to be making some meatloaf. Uh, it's hotter than hell today. I'm actually going to adjust you a little bit. There we go. Okay. Uh, today we're talking meatloaf. Uh, now, one of the things about meatloaf, uh, people say, oh, I don't like it, or oh, I can never make it moist, or you know, it always dries out. And well, I'm going to teach you how to solve those problems. Okay. The the trick is one use fresh bread so what i have in here i have about four slices of bread that i put it now that was sourdough bread but you could use you know i would use white bread or sourdough potato something like that i wouldn't go wheat uh, i just think it'll give it a weird texture uh, so i probably wouldn't do that uh, throw it in the uh, food processor grind it up you're good to go um, as far as the leanness of the meat, I actually took some steaks. Uh, they were having a sale on steak, so I asked them to grind it up for me. So it made it into like a hamburger, so I'm using that. But I would say, you know, you're 85, 15, you know, if you make it too, uh, if you make it with too lean a meat, uh, it can get dry, but I think I've got a solution for you lean meat people. So um, first we're gonna get all this heated up. What I have here is some mushrooms. You know, again, what I'm trying to do is not give you guys recipes. I'm trying to teach you guys how to cook. So, you know, that's why I'm not real exact uh, when I'm telling you guys this, because I want you guys to experiment and learn how to cook. I don't want you guys to learn how to follow a recipe because any dumbass can do that. So what we're gonna do, uh, so we've got some mushrooms, some uh, uh, bell peppers, and some uh, onion. What we're going to do, and this is what most people don't do, and I think this is the key to making it not only taste super good, um, like super savory, but also keeps it really moist. And what we're going to do is we're going to cook the vegetables before we put them in. And I think this is huge. There we go. Uh, I think this is a huge uh, uh, thing. This is what I've been doing for about the last two years. And I'll be honest with you, it almost comes out too moist. Um, it works really, really, really well. Uh, so what you're going to do is we're going to saute these. We're going to put a little uh, red wine in there, and we're going to use red. Basically, if you're using with meat, you know, try to, try to think of what you would... Uh, what you would drink with it if you were having a restaurant. So, for instance, uh, you know, if you're doing chicken, probably going to be a white wine, you know. Uh, if you're doing ducks, probably going to be one of your heavier reds. So cook with that in mind. So that's what I would suggest doing. Now, to this, we're going to add a little salt, a little pepper. Go. Salt. Now, the seasoning, I like to use a no salt seasoning, but you can use whatever you want. A little bit of that. Um, I tend not to do the Italian seasoning on this because it tends to be a little bit more bitter than what I'm really looking for. Uh, oh, the garlic, let me get that. Of course, how can have garlic in everything? Not only is it good tasting, but it's good for you. Go. There we go. So what we're going to do, we let this cook down, and that's on high heat. You might as well make it on a high heat. The, the key to this is you want to get them caramelized. Um, so you want your onions to start turning that caramel color like we all know at at uh, In-N-Out Burger, right? So when you get grilled onions there, right? They're that really nice golden brown, and that's what we want to try to get here. Not only is it going to make the onion softer, but it's also going to give us a flavor. Uh, it's going to give us like a flavor palette, I guess you could say, that is going to be much more savory and is going to taste a lot better. Um, the other thing too is a lot of kids don't like onions. But if you grill them and get them caramelized and all sweet, most of the time, kids will tolerate them. 
Uh, I think it's because of that bite that they have. You know, when they're raw, um, they have almost like an apple type bite where they really spray, you know, uh, and it can be just too harsh, especially for kids. Um, so we let this cook down and uh, I will be right back through the magic of TV. Okay, people, and we're back, and I just wanted to show you kind of what that looks like. Let me see if I can do that. Take you off your perch. You can see right there, see how everything's nice and browned up? Even the mushrooms have a nice little glaze to them and everything. That's just how you want it. And a lot of people will go, well, why are you doing that? You know, I don't understand why you'd want to do that. You know, they go, oh, okay, well, I get it, you know, for the... Uh, for the moisture and all that kind of stuff. Well, find that kids don't like vegetables, right? So what you want to do is, what I always do, is I put them in the Cuisinart, my little fruit processor guy, bring this over here. Um, so I put it in the food processor and then grind it all up. They don't know that the vegetables are in there. They're getting all the flavor. You know, I'm getting all the flavors. They're getting all the uh, vitamins and minerals. And so it kind of works out for everybody. So that's how I make mine super moist. And what you do, I'm gonna take that steamy. <laughs> now, be very careful, because obviously when you grind this up, you're going to have, uh, you know, it's gonna be really, really hot. Uh, and you're gonna have meat that's should be cold. Um, so you don't have a lot of problems with it. You know, be careful with your hands. Well, first go around is always swell, but never gets it all. And I really try to get it all. You can also do this with uh, spaghetti sauce. Um, it's a great way to hide the vegetables so that the kids uh, don't realize they're they're in there and. You don't have to have a plain vanilla kind of crappy sauce. So, you get a more All right, perfect. So, as you can see, this turns out like a, like a, like a mush, like a, you know, like a total mush. See that? What you're gonna do is, so you put that in with your bread. Now, one thing every kitchen should have is one of these guys. They're awesome for getting every last little bit of whatever you're working with out. And it also cuts down on the cleaning because it pretty much gets uh, almost all the stuff out of it. So I have that hamburger that I was talking to you about earlier, that kind of steak. We're gonna put that in there and then, uh, and then I'll mix it all up and we'll be right back. Okay, everybody, we're back. Um, now, a lot of times, uh, and I'm gonna do this just in case, uh, most of the time mine does not need it. Um, but a lot of times, you know, it's almost uh, too runny, you know. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack an egg. And this helps to kind of bind it all together. Um, and it works really nice to just kind of keep it, uh, to keep everything kind of, uh, uh, like I said, bound together. Uh, people do this with hamburgers all the time, especially if they're using uh, really fatty meat. A lot of times you're going to need that to keep it uh, to keep it together, um, and then it's super simple. So after you've got your vegetables in there, all you really do throw a little ketchup I don't know eighth of a cup maybe quarter cup something like that. Oh, and that was about a pound and a half of hamburger. Um, and then the key thing here is barbecue sauce and barbecue sauce really adds that tangy kind of beefy flavor um, that is just perfect in this. Um, I don't, I put the traditional um, uh, uh, ketchup on the top, like, you know, like 
mom did. Um, but barbecue sauce in the actual meat is just awesome. So there we go. Get in your little loaf pan here. And don't worry about if it doesn't make it, you know, like, you know, if you get a little leftover, if you can't fill up the pan, you know, if you can't fill up the pan, what you can always do is add more um, uh, bread. You can all, you know, because most people don't have more meat, but we always have more bread, right? So you can always add a little more bread to kind of uh, even it out. And uh, I've found that really you can add like an insane amount of bread to this. Um, and you really wouldn't even know that there's that much bread in there. You know, it's like, wow, this tastes really beefy. And, you know, there can't be that much. And there's like half a loaf of bread in there. I've actually made ones like that. And they come out really good. Um, so if you got to stretch it, you don't quite have enough. Uh, have enough hamburger don't worry about it just add the add the uh, bread and you know let's face it that's what that's how this dish you know was uh, you know that's what made this popular is if you didn't have a, a lot of meat and you didn't have uh, you know a lot of money you know this is what you made so they made it with more and more bread depending on how uh, you know how poor you were so um, that's pretty much it. Um, there's, it's not really fancy. It's really easy. You're going to uh, take some ketchup, and what I like to do with the ketchup is make like a little layer on the top. And this is kind of a small meatloaf because uh, I don't want a lot of leftovers. Um, but obviously, you can make huge batches of this you know, and put it in a, a fairly big dish and eat it with sam. You know, you can have it, uh, make sandwiches out of it and all that kind of stuff. And there you go. Bammo. Easy peasy. It doesn't take that long. Um, I'll just let you know that the, uh, the times where, um, on this video where I, uh, went away from the camera for a little bit, uh, still is probably a total of maybe seven minutes. So basically, you've seen this from start to finish, just pop it in the oven. Uh, always use a meat thermometer to know if it's done. Um, that's kind of a key, especially with meatloaf, just put the meat thermometer in there. You'll know in a couple minutes whether it's done or not. Serve with some mashed potatoes and you're golden. You guys have a great day, be good humans. We'll talk to you later.